All right, guys, we got Jimmy House in the house. What's up, guys? Sorry, I kind of surprised you. <laughs> so, guys, just so you know, I've probably gone off program, like I, uh, like I just told him, probably less than five times in the last 16 years. Even in body power, Europe, Germany, Australia, I didn't go off program. But we're doing it today. I'm honored. I'm honored. I don't know if I deserve this type of recognition. <laughs> he's he's a good guy. We have some commonalities, so I figured yes, do. this is a nice guy. No Let's go. All righty. All right, guys, so we're going to go over how to perform a traditional sissy squat. Not the one that you see in most gyms where you're leaning back on the, uh, the machine or whatever you want to call it. We're going to actually do a bodyweight sissy squat to implement knee flexion, made famous by knees over toes guy. Something that I implement a lot in my jiu-jitsu training to help bulletproof my knees. So, effectively what it's going to look like is here from the side, I'm going to start with my heels up. My entire body is going to stay neutral. I'm going to push my hips forward. So we're going to have some slight lumbar extension to make sure that my glutes stay engaged. From here, all I'm doing, I typically look down straight at the floor. You can make it harder by putting your hands behind your back, or you can have your hands out for balance. From here, all I'm doing is sitting my knees as far forward as I can as I counterbalance with my upper body to drive through the floor through my quads to come back up. You can progress that forward by starting at a deficit. If I were to stand on something, make the range of motion even longer, or overload the movement by, say, grabbing a plate. Sorry, brother. Grabbing a plate and doing the same exact thing, yep. except weighted. But if you're not at that level yet, you can always digress the movement by doing things such as grabbing an assistance band, or even, say, starting with a higher box and working down week to week like so. But if you're using a band, obviously the higher you grab, the more assistance you'll get, the lower you grab, the less. But this is the same exact movement pattern where we're keeping our glutes engaged, heels are gonna be up, and my knees are gonna sit as far forward over my toes as possible. And remember, counterbalance by leaning backwards with your body. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to fight yourself up. You want long range to so a complete stretch throughout the entire quad, specifically, we're hitting the VMO, the tear, teardrop of the quad, that's going to help build knee stability. But you effectively should feel a stretch along your entire quad up into your hip flexor. So if you're digressing the movement with the band, same thing, hips forward. I like to look out in front, lean back here. And as soon as your knees touch the floor, extend and drive through your quad to come back up. You do enough sets of 10 of this, you should actually feel a really good quad pump. And you'll notice that your knee stability and knee pain, knee pain will start to improve over time. Thanks, oh, yeah. guys. Thank you, brother. There you go. Yeah, you trust it. Keep sending it forward. Good. If you can get those knees to touch, that'd be ideal. Good. And then quad. Quad. Yep. That's it. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Beautiful, good. If you can keep your glutes a little bit more engaged to stay a little bit more neutral, there you go. Exactly, yeah. There you go, nice, hell yeah. Nice. Tell, tell, tell them uh, some things that you do. Like mistakes, something Yeah, so mistakes. typically people will get this confused with the traditional squat, so they won't he keep their hips extended forward. And so as they go down, they'll almost start to load their hips backwards to compensate for lack something of stability. Like yeah, exactly. And so even on the way up too, you want to keep your hips extended through. So that's why I make sure that my glutes stay squeezed together the whole time. You'll want to, especially as fatigue kicks in, to let your glutes loosen up and load your hips so you can make it more of a traditional squat coming up. So would a cue, like a cue be maybe like kind of flexing your glutes a little bit? Yeah, so I basically just flex my glutes forward from the beginning and focus on keeping that contraction. The key to this, as you're doing right now, is to counterbalance your weight by leaning your shoulders far back. Otherwise, you'll have too much weight going forward and then you won't, you won't have, or nor, no one will have the power to drive back up. Yeah. And this, if you're using some sort of band, should you stand where in relation to I would say I would say to where the band's relatively vertical from a starting position. So that way you're getting appropriate assistance going straight back up, but it's not pulling you forward itself. What do you usually tell people in terms of like foot flare and kind of knee going over for, for this one specifically, especially in regards to knee flexion, all my movements are gonna be with my foot going straight forward yeah. so that I can focus on them just sending my knee generally in plain inside with my second, my second toe. 
Yeah. That's generally what I lead with. I guess another thing I was thinking of is uh, kind of your hip external or internal rotation. Like, mm -hmm. things can get a little funky here. Right. It feels almost like you're going like that, uh -huh. especially as you get lower. So, yeah, so for me at the bottom, I do notice some slight external rotation of my hips as, as I start to go down, which I don't think is, is bad in any sense. My cue is at the bottom, if I can feel my hamstrings touch my calves, then I'm at a pretty good spot to maximize the benefit of the exercise. Okay. So right here, this is pretty similar to what I would look like on the ground as well. And what kind of people would you kind of program this exercise for? So the great thing about this exercise, in my opinion, is that anybody can do it and anyone can benefit from it. But specifically when it comes to athletes, as far as all the knee injuries that occur in different sports, the benefit for me as a jiu-jitsu athlete is something that I notice on a daily basis as far as stability goes. You can even argue athleticism, speed, explosion. Knees over toes guy uses this as a, as a great exercise to increase his jumping capabilities as well. So stability, health, as far as athleticism goes too, is, is a great all-around exercise. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you. All right, so is this part of your program or is this kind of just... This one right here? Yeah. Yeah, so this is called the ATG Asagrass Split Squat. Okay. So unlike a traditional split squat where you're generally, you know, you're loading weight and it's basically like a stationary lunge yeah. here. This one, again, maximizing how far you can send your knee over your toe, so knee flexion. With that said, there's certain ways that you can digress this movement similar to the sissy squat. So for example, if I'm just starting out with this movement and I don't have the strength or mobility to get in the proper position, I might elevate my foot somewhere between six to eight inches so that I can still have all the benefits of the exercise, which is sitting my knee as far forward as I can, yeah. but not compensate with my lack of mobility or strength on my back half, specifically my hip flexor. Yeah. The goal of this movement is to keep your back leg straight. Similar to the sissy squat, I'm gonna send my hips forward and lead with my chest yeah. so that my knee, again, goes as far forward over my toe as possible, and I should feel very yeah. confident and stable here. What do you say, because a lot of people are gonna say, oh, what's, what's going on there? Mm, okay, yeah, so there's two ways you can do this. I can keep my heel down and use ankle dorsiflexion to trust the position. For me, I can get close to full range, but I need a little bit more, so actually it's totally fine to let that heel pick up so that you can send your knee farther forward over your toe. Yeah. Because my goal is, again, to get my hamstring to cover my calf. Is and that if, a bad thing to let the heels come up? No, not at all, because the purpose of this movement is to build strength and stability in the knee, the VMO we're trying to target here. So the farther you can send it, whether your heel's down or your heel's up, you're going to get all the same benefits. And then for me, personally, as a grappler, combat sports athlete, if I'm taking a shot and I'm here, I'm always going to come up over my toe and my yeah. heel's going to come up. So this is actually a very sport-specific position for myself. So I like to implement that for more range of motion and then also to make it sport specific. So whether your heels down or your heels up, all the same benefits. If you prefer having your full foot flat, I suggest elevating your heel with either an Olympic weightlifting shoe or a slant board. So then that way you're achieving the same range of motion. But just make sure your back leg stays as straight as possible because you don't want to be doing this. Yeah. If you find yourself bending that back leg, then I suggest elevating your front foot so that it's much easier to keep your back leg straight so you can strengthen your knee as you can get your back hip flexor to open up. That's the ultimate goal. So a lot of, uh, like my audience, <laughs> mostly, you know, hypertrophy focused, right? Right. Body what kind of, uh, like, so for those who are just focused on the muscle, is there any sort of benefits to once in a while doing something like this, programming this? There absolutely what is. Because first off, like, How would you justify it? I would, ju I would someone justify who it by- just wants to build muscle. I would justify it by, when I first started doing these, even to now, the pump I get from this is so unique compared to anything else because most people aren't specifically used to targeting that teardrop of the knee. Like we hit it as, as a major muscle, like during squats and stuff, but as far as like isolating that with that long range quad movement, it's very rare. So you'll notice right off the get go, sore, pump is insane. And you'll notice how not strong most people are in that position early on. But even from the conversation of hypertrophy, what I would say is that these exercises make being more, having more longevity with your hypertrophy movements much more important because you can go through all your squats and your leg presses, heavy or not, eventually we're all kind of meant to break down at some point. But if you can add in movements like this, 
to increase your durability. You'll notice a lot, le a lot less knee pain, injuries are gonna be less, and you'll be stronger day to day, so you won't notice any diminishing returns from your actual intense training. Yeah, I, I like that position. Uh, I feel like for a lot of people, it's become more of an upper intermediate to advanced lifter. Mm -hmm. Basically, gains are what you accrue in between injuries, right. essentially. You could, <laughs> let's say my best friend, I, I accidentally yeah. tore his ACL in jujitsu. Oh, wow. Accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> and so if I'm coaching him yeah. through this movement, I might have him elevate his front leg because his knee mobility was atrocious. I'll elevate his front leg and I might have him grab the band so that he feels comfortable putting more weight forward on that knee as he learns to build trust. Yeah. And as he basically tells his body like, hey, we are going to introduce this position week to week. So I need you to strengthen itself or I need you to strengthen yourself so that we can eventually get to the point to where we don't need the van. And then we can eventually get to the point to where we can do this body weight or we can do this now adding weight. Oh, yeah, good. And if you feel confident in this position, able to hold it almost like a pause squat, you know that stability in the long range is getting to a point where you should feel, feel pretty confident. What kind of rep range do you usually work on in this? For me, most of these sets have been anywhere from three, three sets of 10 reps, but I also sometimes treat it like a deadlift or a squat, so I might actually bring it to like three by fives or five by fives and actually focus on the pure strength aspect as well. It depends on where my goal is at. If my goals are, just stability, I might have the higher rep range, or if I want to have it benefit me to where, say, I can jump really high, yeah. I might lower the rep range so I can build more direct power with the movement. Gotcha. I think if I have any other random questions. Um, what's the most you've done on this exercise? I'm just kind of curious. This one recently, I hit yeah. 95 on each leg. I just started getting to the point where I can add weight. That's for sets of five, ten. Typically five to eight. Five to eight. Yeah. And until you do it, you don't know how hard yeah. that actually is. I feel is, like most of it's probably just like the balance, but also. The, yeah, the balance. And you know, because yeah. when I first started this, one, I wasn't mobile enough, AKA my back hip flexor wasn't strong enough. So I'd yeah. be, be like this. Or once I finally started to get down, I'd be like, like, like this. You could, yeah. you could tell where I was weak in a long range. Yeah. Now I'm at the point to where, in a long range, I can hold this for a good period of time, stay here, treat it like a pause squat, and come back up and talk through it. So you see this progression from shaky, short range of motion muscles kicking in, and then now at the point to where in the long range, I feel pretty confident to be able to explain through the movement. So there's a ton of progression there week to week, and as long as you're consistent with it, you'll notice a lot of benefits. Okay. Okay. I don't think there's any other random questions. Um, Okay. Say someone's a pure bodybuilder, uh -huh. again, right? And uh, would you necessarily program this for them, or would this mostly be for someone who is sport-specific? Me, biasly, yes. I program it for, honestly, anybody, because I have my jiu-jitsu clients, powerlifting clients, general fitness clients, some bodybuilding. I always have some version of a, either ATG split squat or a sissy squat, or we're focusing on max knee flexion, just because of the durability benefits. But even in the bodybuilding world, if you're really trying to hit your BMO, the teardrop, whether you care about knee stability or knee health or not, finding a way to get this to activate and pop out, these are the exercises that you really want to incorporate. Getting your knee to come here yeah. and be able to contract hard through that movement to bring you back to your starting position. I suggest doing it and treat it like you would leg press, quad extension, etc., and see for yourself the benefit because the muscle's definitely working. You'll feel it when you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do feel like sometimes t taking a step back mm -hmm. from just these hypertrophy movements, which most people aren't performing with full range of motion anyways, and perhaps investing some time, energy, programming into something like yes. this, kind of like opens up their mind like a more full range of motion, yes. better joint health, better uh, muscle length health, stuff like that. I agree. And I probably say that the, the hardest part, first off, is how humbling a lot of these movements are from the get-go. Yeah. So if you aren't ready to take that ego hit, sometimes it's not as motivating to want to do these week after week. But for me, seeing the progression, even if it's just something as simple as going from a medium band to a light band, I know I'm getting stronger. Yeah. As soon as I don't need the band and I'm only doing this, 
I know I'm getting stronger and I see that I'm getting closer and closer to the ground yeah. and we see the progression. So as long as you're consistent with it and you could even have your frequency two to three times a week with a lot of these movements because they're not necessarily taxing on your CNS, yeah. but you can have a higher frequency and still progress like you would say doing chest three times a week, arms three times a week. I don't know why you would do that, but yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is like I'm thinking, um, so this is a little bit out of, uh, out of the scope of some of the people interested probably in this mm -hmm. video. But I program like advanced hypertrophy for myself, right? Uh -huh. And as part of that, like the global or the uh, macro periodization is to have things like reset. I don't know if you kind of messed with this, but resensitization phases, Not stuff as like much, that. No, okay. um, so every once in a while, I'll plan a phase of say four weeks, including a deload week, where I will like a lot less volume mm -hmm. and perhaps even further from failure. Okay. I feel like something like this could actually be where you would enjoy that training yeah. and have some sort of benefit while sort of resensitizing yourself to higher volumes of the hypertrophy specific movements later on. Yeah. I'm just thinking out no, loud. I completely agree. And, huh. and you're never really feeling like you're maxing out per se. Yeah. So with that said, there's a lot of room left in the tank after each workout, but just by introducing the new movement to your body, you don't even, and most people don't even give enough credit to how much that actually helps you yeah. progress and with strength and, and everything overall. Because yeah. even if I did, let's say I just did like five, reps a day, every single day of just oh, yeah. this. Over time, yeah. adaptation says that my body's gonna get stronger in that position, yeah. and if I wanna continue to make that stronger, then we bring the box lower until we get to the ground, and then we start adding weight to further strengthen the movement. So I just really appreciate these movements because of all the multiple ways to progress them, and then progress them as you actually get really good at them, whether it's a sissy squat, ATG split squat, you can go into different Jefferson curls, Holoquin squats, it's all the knees over toes movements, has been something that's been a huge staple in my training and it's something that I've seen huge benefits for myself and durability, hypertrophy and strength, being a powerlifter and natural bodybuilder. Okay. Interesting, man. I'll think of some more random awesome. questions cool. for you in a cool. minute. That's awesome. Thank you, brother. Sweet, thank you. Where, uh, where can they, uh, I'll just tag you. <laughs> I'm say, where can they find you? you can, He'll be here. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at, at jhouse182 or www.teamhousestrong.com. Thanks, cool. guys. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.